Howdy folks. Welcome to what's left of Chloride, Arizona. You know, I've been hanging around these parts for a long, long time. And in the early 1860s, silver was discovered, what is now called Silver Hills. Chloride was originally named for the rich silver ore that was discovered in this area. A small party of soldiers was dispatched from a nearby fort to prospect in this northern Mojave County. Legend has it that silver was discovered and the men started mining. The four men worked for several months and they dug a shaft to about 100 feet. And one day while mining, the men were attacked by a band of Wallapai Indians. Two of the men were killed Two of them escaped to a nearby settlement. By the 1870s, prospectors were flocking to the area. It wasn't long till the miners and their families were arriving by the wagon load. By 1872, people were building houses in chloride. Now Mineral Park, just a few miles south of Chloride in the Serbat Mountains, was also rich with precious minerals. By 1899, Chloride was quite a town. And on May the 8th, 1900, Chloride became the first incorporated city in Mojave County. By 1910, Chloride had a population of about 2,000 complete with train service to Kingman. But by 1939, the boom was over. Some of the mines continued operating until 1947, but the miners were disappearing. By 1951, there were about 100 residents left in chloride. Today, chloride is truly a living ghost town with a population of about 350 living. Chloride today is a mere shadow of what she was a hundred years ago but it's the shadows you have to look out for. These days, Chloride receives a trickle of tourists from around the world. But on most days, what you'll find in Chloride is peace and quiet. Except for a few relics, scattered across the desert and nearby mountains. Most of what was here is now gone. Just a few old pieces of broken dreams remain. But all dreams in chloride aren't lost. Today there are new dreams. Chloride has an active historical society determined to protect what's left and share the stories of the past. This is Cyanide Springs, it's built by some of the locals. We use it for gunfight reenactments, uh, videos, and a movie. This is our telegraph office. Excuse me, let me check my email. Hello, Sparky. Hey, Jim, how you doing? Got an email for me? Yeah, as a matter of fact, let me look. Here, that just came in. Thank you, Sparky. You're welcome. See you later. Take it easy, Jim. Had a small problem with the wolves. They got two calves last week. How's the mining? Some cowboy was here looking for you. 
Said he was an old friend. I told him you were in chloride. Yesterday's restaurant was built in the 1880s by the Butterfield Stagecoach Line as a stagecoach repair station here in Chloride. This was the main route, part of the main route, up to San Francisco. And in the desert, the stages had to grease their wheels about every 30 miles. So they'd pull the stage in through the front door here, and there's some hooks up in the ceiling that are still there where they'd lift the body off the stagecoach and uh, grease the underside of the stage, and then they'd ride out through the trifold barn door, which was in the back wall, and go on up to Cottonwood Road, where there was a ferry, ferry crossing. This, of course, before Hoover Dam was built. In the 1910s and 20s, this was a, became an automobile repair shop as, as automobile traffic started. And this road out here, which is 2nd Street, was the main road again going to the ferry crossing before the dam was built. In preparation of the dam, they moved the main road down to 93. We've had a lot of celebrities both on stage as, as well as here in town. In fact, Jack Nicholson filmed his first movie, Rebel Rousers, right here in the hotel. And we've also had Tony Mafia, the world-renowned artist, uh, lived here in the late 80s, early 90s and painted couple of the murals that you see on the walls of the rooms here. Also, of course, Roy Purcell and his world-famous murals here in town. Hundreds of miles of trails and roads and washers surrounding the area. Chloride is on some of the best riding around. Boy, these old boys look like they're having fun. A lot of these old trails were built by the miners and they led right to the mines. We encourage our visitors to enjoy the backcountry, but please be careful of these mines. They can be deadly.
In the early days, Chloride shared a relationship with Oatman, Arizona, as miners traveled back and forth working the mines. You can still find remnants of the past scattered along the highways between Oatman and Chloride. Even these donkeys are remnants of the past, descendants of the original donkeys owned by the miners. This is Oatman today. These little donkeys help bring a lot of tourists to Oatman. Oakman is located about 30 miles east of Laughlin, Nevada. Chloride is located about 45 miles northeast of Laughlin and about 90 miles south of Las Vegas, Nevada. When the Hoover Dam was built, it was considered a modern marvel. Today, there's a new modern marvel spanning the Colorado. This time it's high above the water. When the bridge is completed, it will connect to a four-lane highway from Las Vegas to I-40 near Kingman, Arizona, passing within four miles of chloride. This old gas station served chloride for nearly 30 years, closed around 1950. Although it's been about 50 years since it's closed, tourists have reported seeing a station attendant here milling around. Look at these gas prices. Come on, follow me over the old jail. The old jail was built in 1919, served chloride for about 30 years and closed down in 1950. The old jail was home to a lot of drunken miners and cowboys. <laughs> I was one of them myself. Well, this is about all the old jail. Uh, let's go to the train depot. Santa Fe Railroad laid tracks in 1898 to Chloride. It hauled uh, ore and passengers to Kingman several times a day. This old building is supposed to be one of the most haunted buildings in Mojave County. Tell you the truth, I don't like coming here myself. This old depot served chloride till around 1935 before it shut down. But it's been reported by tourists and the locals that some nights you can hear the sound of a train in the distance. And in the building you hear laughter of people talking and laughing or waiting for the train. Welcome to Cyanide Springs. Enjoy the gunfight.
that old blonde headed lady. Well, we still were together. Last time I seen her. I ain't been home about three months. Me fucking woman. Look at that grandson of yours. I don't see you picking up the tray. Boy, off running with the wild boy. Running with the wild boy. Well, me and you know how that was, don't we? <laughs> what are you doing here, Nathan? Can you ever just stop by and say hello? Friend, you know friend of mine. Come on, Frank. You know how it works. Once a rebel, always a rebel. I mean, once a murderer, always a murderer. You can find someone here every Saturday at high noon shooting it out. On other days, you might find us working on a video or doing some filming. Hey, welcome to the Chloride Chamber of Commerce and Arizona Visitor Center. Come on in. Well, we are an official Arizona Office of Tourism uh, Information Center. The first one you get to when you're coming from Las Vegas to go to the Grand Canyon. So a lot of our visitors are on their way to the canyon. So we give them information about the Grand Canyon. We give them a, um, a map. We mark it for them, tell them where to go, how to get there. And we give them inside information like where's the best place to stop on the edge of the canyon to see the condors flying and we send them to our favorite hamburger joint in Jerome and tell them how to get to Sedona. Um, we have them sign our guest book. We have over 15,000 people a year that sign this guest book and they come from all over the world. Uh, one month last summer I, I counted up we had visitors from 26 different countries that came and signed this guest book. So we have visitors from all over the country. They're going to the West Rim of the Grand Canyon, they're going to the South Rim, they're going to Flagstaff, Sedona, Jerome, uh, Monument Valley, the Navajo Reservation, and uh, we get them on their way. Hello, I'm Gary Day, pastor of the Clory Baptist Church. This is my wife, Victoria. Uh, we uh, are pastors of the church. that has been here about 113 years and one, of the, I think it's the second oldest church in uh, the state of Arizona that's been continuously operated. Uh, uh, the first pastor's name was Jack Day, so this, uh, so it's no relative, but <laughs> it was quite quite interesting. Uh, the uh, the church is made from uh, river rock and been covered with stucco. Um, the Southern Baptist Church has owned it since the uh, early 40s, I think. Uh, it's come back this time, and uh, we, we appreciate being here and love our town and community, and glad to meet you all. It was named after silver, silver chloride. The area was a big silver, lead, and zinc mining area. And also, Kingman Turquoise, very famous. Tennessee Avenue was the main avenue in chloride. There were dozens of businesses lining the street. Today, it's kind of a ghost of the past. A couple of times a year, 
this little town really comes to life. Every year, the Saturday before St. Patrick's Day, we hold a town parade in honor of St. Patrick. The last Saturday in June, we pay honor to the miners who built this town with the annual Miners Day Parade that brings spectators from all over. Miners Day Parade brings out a lot of unique cars, tractors, wagons, motorcycles, and quads. And a lot of colorful people with great stories and a lot of laughter. Every year we have a soapbox derby and also a pet parade. You know chloride has always been interest to motorcycle enthusiasts. And if you look around chloride long enough, there's no telling what you might find. Bye, folks. Legend has it that in the 1800s, the family moved in to the foot of the Surbat Mountains a man, a woman, and two small children. Well, they started a ranch, a very small ranch, but they worked it from daylight to dark. In the evenings, when it was time for supper, the woman would come to the door, ring her dinner bell, and that was time to wash up for supper. Well, the ranch ran on some hard times, and the man had to come over here in chloride and do a little mining and make a few dollars to keep the ranch going. Well, the story goes that one night, October's a moonlit night. A band of renegades come over. Well, they killed the woman, or shot the woman, they left her for dead. Stole the cattle and the children, who they were going to sell for white slaves, and burnt the ranch house down. Well, the next morning, there's a couple of cowboys out rounding up some strays, and they saw this smoke, so they rode over to see what was going on. The woman had crawled out of the ranch house, and she was laying out in front of it, and it was still smoldering and they tried to tried to help her but she was too far gone she died within the hour well the story goes that people have said that on a moonlight night when the wind is still out in the desert everything is is really still one might hear a dinner bell ringing well this is time to go wash up for supper